Station Houston Space Ground 2. We are ready to get started with the event. Um, so with that, Station Houston, are you ready for the event? Please check the microphone. We did not hear that. We are not hearing you on that mic. Houston, this is Station. How do you hear? Associated Press, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Marcia Dunn with the Associated Press. How do you hear me? Marcia, good afternoon and welcome to the International Space Station. We hear you loud and clear and we're ready to begin. Well, wonderful. Uh, I'm glad we finally got the uh, communication problem settled. Um, greetings from a stormy and wet Kennedy Space Center, which is where I'm talking to you from. Um, I guess I'd start with you, Steve. It must seem like an Airbnb or maybe a space B&B this week. I'm wondering, how much are you interacting with the Axiom crew, and are they staying out of your hair? Uh, no, they're, they're actually, we've integrated them pretty well into the crew, and uh, they're very busy behind us doing a lot of work, uh, which they brought with them, which we, uh, uh, you know, they stepped right in, and they stepped right up. So it is kind of crowded at times. We do have some uh, passageway issues, and uh, but we'll get more managing. It works out pretty well. I'm really enjoying the company, actually. Uh, um, Woody, let me ask you, wh what do you see as the value of private crews in your mind? You know, it'll still be a long time before the non-wealthy get to experience this, but what's the value that you see? Yeah, that's a great question. I think I truly believe that there's no cooler time than right now to be involved in space exploration. It's just such an exciting time. And I think what we're seeing is a real economy growing in low Earth orbit. You're seeing like a, a billion, billions of dollars uh, industry in satellites and also uh, human space flight in low Earth orbit. And it's just a really exciting time um, to see all that development. And so I think um, part of that is definitely seeing these private crews more and more flying, and one of the things that's going to allow NASA to do is focus on our mission, which is exploration and pushing further into the solar system. And so uh, with that, we're going to embark on the Artemis missions, go back to the moon, and set up a proving ground there to ultimately get to Mars. Uh, Frank, if I could ask you a few questions. You know, when you launched last fall, you had no idea that your Soyuz was going to become disabled and you'd be up there for a whole calendar year. How hard was it to get used to the idea of being up there so long, and how are you coping? Hey, Marsha. You know, um, you're right. I had no idea. And uh, on a personal level, it was pretty tough uh, just because I was missing my family, and I knew I was going to miss some uh, pretty uh, big milestones for my kids especially. On a professional level, it was actually um, not bad at all. Uh, there's a great team on the ground that supports us. Uh, I had a great crew as my first increment crew, and then I get to work with these guys and other crewmates as part of my second crew. Uh, and so in a way, it was kind of a blessing because I get to fly with a lot more, uh, a lot more people. Um, and up here, honestly, it's, uh, although we have uh, hiccups here and there, things are just uh, incredibly smooth just because we do have a ground team that uh, plans the heck out of our days and our weeks and our months. Uh, they stay ahead of, um, of the needs of the station, and uh, they really allow us to, to focus on our work and, and uh, enjoy our work up here. Well, what, what are a few of the milestones that you've missed, and how are you going to make up for that? <laughs> well, yeah, you can't really make up for those, right? Um, you know, but birthdays, anniversaries, um, graduation. Uh, yeah, my son's going to head off to college uh, this year. Uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, is finishing up her first year of college. Um, but, you know, we, we don't really expect to make those up, per se. We've tried really hard to stay uh, in touch with one another. Um, I've, I've kind of been uh, just 
try to be disciplined about staying involved in their lives as much as possible. Uh, and obviously, uh, my wife, uh, my kids, they've been troopers, and they've really handled it incredibly well. And how well they've handled it has made it easier for me to just focus on work and um, you know, make do uh, with, with the uh, hand we've been dealt. Ultimately, there was nothing we could do about it. Uh, NASA and Roscosmos did an amazing job of uh, supporting us and making sure that we did the, the safest thing possible. Uh, and we know that, that ultimately there's a reason that all of this happened. We don't know what that reason is, but uh, we know that there will be some good that comes out of it. And, and what are you missing? You must be craving something up there besides your, your children and your wife. What, what do you really miss about Earth? Uh, you know, I um, well, two things. Well, we do stay incredibly clean up here, uh, but you basically have to towel yourself off uh, every day after working out. Uh, so I do. I, I'm looking forward to a shower when I get back, and then also just uh, the smells of Earth, being outside, smelling the grass and the trees, uh, and just going for a hike or something like that. Again, it doesn't smell bad up here on station, but um, you just miss that that nat natural uh, outdoor smell more than anything. Coming back to Earth in your new Soyuz, you feel comfortable with that? So far, so good with it. So far, so good with it. Yeah, no, you know, I do, I do feel perfectly comfortable with it. Uh, like I said, ultimately, the fact that NASA has uh, blessed off on that, and I know Roscosmos has put a lot of time and effort also into ensuring that um, you know crew pri crew safety is the number one priority, and I think they've done right by us uh, in everything that they've done. So uh, I think we as a crew feel pretty comfortable with the situation. Well, safe travels to all three of you, and, and good luck and Godspeed. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you, Marsha. We appreciate uh, spending the time with you, and uh, have a great day. Station, this is the Houston ACR. That concludes the AP portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from NBC6. Uh, I can't hear them. No. Hey, Chelsea, this is uh, the crew from uh, Station. How do you hear? Hi, I can hear you. How do you hear me? Hey, Chelsea, we have you loud and clear, and welcome to the International Space Station. This meeting is being recorded. Hi guys, uh, just wanted to kind of talk and get a, to know you a little bit and kind of your experiences that you're dealing with there on the space station. So what are some of the skills that you've been able to achieve while being up there? Well, one of the best parts of being up here is just how varied the work is. So we're absolutely generalists. We're, we're all up here for six months, or in some cases, a bit longer than that. Uh, Frank's up here for a year. And so with a mission that long, we all have to be absolute generalists. We're space electricians. We're space plumbers. Um, we're you know constantly rearranging stowage. We're uh, getting outside to do spacewalks once in a while. We're doing scientific research, spending time in glove boxes. So. Um, it's actually just really fun getting trained on all those different um, areas that we contribute to. And uh, it's really one of the best parts is that every day is wildly different than the one before. So what has been your most memorable experience that you've had up there? Actually, uh, so this is my uh, fourth flight into space. and so. All my previous flights were very short, so having the opportunity to spend a long time and really get to live on board station has been really, uh, really very exciting for me. And that, uh, you know, that that is, I'm I'm glad I'm enjoying it. I've got an incredible crew to to share it with, and I think that's really the best part of this whole experience so far. So, what do you what do any of you do to prep? to go up for a mission? What are some of the things you do to get ready? 
Hey, Chelsea. Yeah, you know, we spent almost two years preparing for our mission once we were assigned uh, to that mission. And uh, like what he said, uh, we spent a lot of that time just training on all the different systems um, that the space station essentially is, is composed of, right? So we have to be familiar with that electrical system, with the plumbing system, uh, with the air conditioning system, essentially, uh, because this is all uh, self-contained environment. And so when something breaks, we have to fix it. Uh, and so we spent a lot of time training on um, how the system works and then how to fix it. Uh, we also spent a lot of time in the uh, neutral buoyancy lab training on our uh, spacewalks because that's probably one of the most challenging things we do. Uh, and so we spend uh, hours and hours in there, days and days, uh, just doing it over and over so that we're comfortable. And uh, once we go out into the vacuum of space with nothing but a spacesuit on, uh, we can do our job and do it comfortably. And then we spend a lot of time getting familiar with our spacecraft because uh, ultimately, uh, while some a lot of it is automated, if something goes wrong, we need to be able to respond uh, to those situations. And so we spend a lot of time studying our rocket, uh, being familiar with uh, how it works, and uh, most of all, being familiar with how to respond in case something is off nominal. So since we only have a, a few more minutes here, I kind of want to do a, a, maybe a fun question to get to know you guys a little bit. Uh, what is the, the, I'd say the most fun thing and the most disgusting thing about living in space? All right, well, I'll give you the second half. Um, many people are uh, surprised to learn that we actually drink our own, uh, well, drink a recycled version of our own urine. So the uh, water reclamation system up here, um, when we urinate, the urine goes through a, a system of filters and a reverse osmosis process and ultimately gets recycled into clean drinking water with uh, over 90% efficiency. It actually tastes absolutely delicious. We love sustainability. Um, if we can, maybe a, a question directly to Frank, since you are a hometown hero here for Miami. What is some advice that you have for somebody that might want to become an astronaut? Hey, Chelsea, well, thanks for those words. You know, it's an honor to represent Miami, our community, and really our entire nation up here uh, as a crew. And so um, I think really the key is to just find something that you love, uh, that you have a passion for, and, and do your best at that, right? And always, um, I think learning how to become a lifelong learner uh, is really important because like we said, we spend a lot of time studying and learning new things. Um, when I first showed up to NASA, I had no idea what aerospace engineering even really meant, right? Uh, but learning uh, all about orbits uh, and what it's like to, to fly to space and all the math uh, associated with that was really a lot of fun. So I think learning how to, um, how to grow every day and how to get better at something uh, and just challenge yourself to continue to get better uh, is really one of the keys. And I think the other uh, big key and probably the most important key uh, is how to become a good team player because uh, nothing that we do up here uh, is an individual. Uh, we, we work as a team as a crew. Uh, we work as a team with the ground teams and all the, the people that su support us throughout the world. And so just learning how to be a, a functional part of a team member um, that helps others get better um, and you know, takes um, support from others is really also super important for being uh, in this job. Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck up there with everything you guys are accomplishing. Well, thanks so much, Chelsea. Uh, take care and I hope it's a beautiful day down in Miami. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event. Thank you to all the participants with the Associated Press and NBC6 South Florida. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.